Adam, how does science know anything anyway? I mean, sometimes, you know, you read the news and it seems like scientists can't even figure out if, like, bacon is bad for you or good for you. What makes us think that science actually knows stuff? I mean, one of the things that you'll hear people talk about sometimes is uh, this idea called falsifiability. So it's this idea that, uh, that, that an idea is scientific if it can be falsified, if it can be proven wrong. Okay. It, it's just wrong. Like that, that's not true. Even the guy who came up with falsifiability uh, as an idea for this, uh, his name was Karl Popper. He didn't even really think that falsifiability was the end all be all. But you hear a lot of people, a lot of scientists especially, sort of grabbing onto that and running with it. So does that mean that like scientific ideas actually can't necessarily be falsified? Not quite. It means that you can always do something to save it. Let me give you an example. Once upon a time, there was a man named Isaac Newton, right? And he came up with the theory of universal gravitation. He said that, you know, objects attract each other through this process called gravity. He also, you know, came up with three laws of motion that help us figure out how objects interact with each other. So once we had all of that, uh, we were able to do things like figure out how stuff in the solar system should move. Okay. And one thing that happened... After Newton died, astronomers used telescopes and discovered something really new. They discovered a new planet in the solar system. They discovered the planet that we now call Uranus. Um, but the problem was that uh, Uranus wasn't moving the right way. Like they, they watched it and they found that it really wasn't moving the way that Newton's laws of motion and universal gravitation said it should be moving. So in theory, they, they should have started chucking out the laws of universal gravitation at that point. Right, you, you'd think that they would, but that, that isn't what happened. Instead, they said, oh, there must be another thing out there that's tugging on Uranus and making it move, you know, in a way that we didn't expect. And so actually a, a really smart French mathematician and astronomer, uh, Urbain Le Verrier. I don't think he was the first person to think that there was another planet out there, but he actually calculated where it should be. And he handed his calculations to uh, some astronomers and said, here, look here. I think you're going to find something interesting. And they found Neptune. They found Neptune exactly where he said it was going to be. And that was amazing. So it turned out that actually Newton was right all along and it was just that there was something unexpected happening that we hadn't seen coming. Exactly, yeah. But there was another sequel. Oh, okay. So Mercury was also not moving the right way, and Le Verrier, the same guy who found Neptune, he really sunk his teeth into this one, and he said, okay, you know, there's this work last time, there's another planet, and it must be so close to the sun that we can't see it. It's like lost in the glare of the sun, this other planet where it must be really hot. So we're going to name it after uh, the Roman god of forging and blacksmiths. We're, we're going to name it Vulcan. Which would later be very, very confusing for all Star Trek fans everywhere. Yes, indeed. So they start hunting for Vulcan. And, you know, Le Verrier thinks he sees it. Other people think they see it, but it's not clear and their data is not very good. And then Einstein came along. And Einstein said, no, guys, Newton was just wrong. So Einstein says, no, gravity isn't quite how Newton said it was. Here's a better theory of gravity, the theory of general relativity. And lo, the theory of general relativity completely accounted for the anomaly in Mercury's orbit. So basically, it sort of seems like sometimes we, we keep the theory when it conflicts with experimental error and we just go and find some more experiments and then some but sometimes we go oh no we better have radically changed the theory yeah and and there's no real way to tell what's going to happen in advance the only thing that you can do is get more data and so then this leaves us sort of in a pickle right like why are scientific facts better you know more reliable than facts from anywhere else why why are they so much better one way of thinking about it which i really like is Science runs on something called induction. Induction is this idea that, that you learn things about the world by looking at the world. Uh, and if things have happened before, then they're very likely to happen again. Like, you know, the sun rose today, the sun rose yesterday, the sun rose the day before, so on and so forth. So it's very likely that the sun will also rise tomorrow. And this is sort of the logical process at the heart of science. Of course, that doesn't always work. 
you know, something that happened before might not be what happens in the future. And in fact, this, this is what it says on every single stock investors packet, you know, past performance is no guarantee of future results. And in fact, science tells us that there will come a day when the sun won't rise. The sun is going to die and it might swallow the earth. And even if it doesn't swallow the earth, a day will come when the sun doesn't rise. So, so why should we have any faith in this stuff? Well, this process of induction that we use for its facts is the same process that we use to do literally everything in our everyday lives. What do you do first thing in the morning when you wake up? Probably go and have breakfast. Right. Why? Because I'm hungry. Right. Okay. Why do you think that having breakfast is going to make you less hungry? Because every time I get hungry, I eat something. And normally that makes me feel less hungry. Right. The point is, this process of induction is what you need to do literally everything in your life. If you couldn't rely on it, you just, you'd be paralyzed by indecision because you wouldn't know anything. What I'm saying is you don't have to have confidence that science and scientific results work. But if you're going to believe in anything at all, then you should probably believe in science too.